So not only can a magnetic field exert a force on current that flows in a wire, but if you arrange it in the proper orientation, then you can get a magnetic field to make a loop of wire spin around, which is the uh, basic design behind a DC motor. So let's just review real quick here. If I have a segment of wire of length L and it's got current flowing to the right and a magnetic field B pointing into the page, then put your thumb in the direction of the current, put your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and your palm would face up. So we say there's a force equal to B I L acting on that segment of wire. Okay, uh, let's try a slightly different arrangement. What if we took um, a bar magnet. Uh, there's a south pole somewhere over here, north pole. And then there's another bar magnet. Its north pole is over on this end and south pole here. So we'll ignore the magnetic field inside of the magnets or over in this region. Just in the area between these two poles, there's a magnetic field. Uh, let's pick a light color. Go green. Yeah, there's a magnetic field here pointing from north to south. Uh, I know the field lines don't stop there, they keep going through this magnet, but we're just focusing on the field in the region between the two poles shown. All right, then let's imagine we take a segment of wire, and I'm trying to draw this somewhat three-dimensional, so what if we have a loop of wire like this? Okay, so what, we connect this to the positive terminal and that to the negative terminal, and then we'd have a current that would flow in this direction. So if you're seeing this the way I'm trying to draw it, this is current going into the page in this segment of wire. And we'll say this segment of wire has a length of L, and then this segment of wire has a width of W. Um, oh, we can get a little creative and imagine some way to mount this on an axle. So based on the right hand rule, you have a current that's going into the page and it's in a magnetic field that points to the right. So point your fingers to the right, point your thumb into the page and you get a force that points downward. Does that check out? Okay, then the current is going to flow this way, but now it's anti-parallel to the magnetic field, so there's no force in the segment of wire that has width W, and the current's flowing uh, out of the page over on this side of the wire. So we've got like size what? A, B, C, and D. So segment D of this loop of wire has a force downward. Segment C has no force at all. In the same way, segment A would have no force. But segment B has a force. Okay, so point your thumb out of the page. Point your fingers to the right. And I think you'd agree that segment B has a force that points up. So if you have two forces on opposite sides that don't align, then it's going to create a torque that's going to make this thing spin. As we look at it down the axle, it's going to be spinning in a clockwise direction. So let's figure out what the net torque is equal to. There's the torque due to the force acting on wire segment B. So we'll say the force on wire segment B, and remember torque is force times lever arm. So the lever arm is how far the application of force is located from the axis of rotation. So we'll say the axle represents the axis of rotation. Then the lever arm is uh, half the width of this segment of wire. So force on wire segment B times W over 2. Force 
times lever arm is torque plus that tends to make this rotate clockwise but this force also adds to the torque in a clockwise direction so we have the force on wire segment D and then it also has a lever arm of W over 2 so we add those together we get the net torque is equal to no wait the force on wire segment B and the force on wire segment D is the same amount of force. It's just the strength of the field times the amount of current flowing in the wire times the length of that wire segment, which is the same on both parts B and D. So FB and FD are both BIL. And then if we factor that out, um, W over 2 plus W over 2, which is, gives us W. So we get the net torque on the loop is B I L W and L times W the length times the width is the area of our loop so the torque on this loop of wire that carries a current is B times I times A there's another form of the equation for the torque on a current loop that's expressed like this torque after all is a vector quantity so the magnitude of the torque is the field strength times the current times the area of the loop. But we can also calculate it as mu cross product with magnetic field. So this term mu is called magnetic dipole moment. And mu is actually equal to uh, the product of the area of the loop and the current in the loop. So you can actually see that these two equations um, calculate out to the same magnitude either way. So we need to talk a little more about how mu is a vector quantity. Um, area isn't really a vector and current isn't really a vector. So I think what we mean by the dipole moment is uh, the scalar quantity of area and the scalar quantity of current multiplied by a unit vector Right? All unit vectors have a magnitude of 1, so by multiplying by the unit vector n, I'm not changing the value of the dipole moment. And I'm choosing the unit vector n, where n represents a vector that points normal to the plane of the loop. So we had, in our drawing, a loop that looks something like this. Right? And if that was positive and that's negative, then current float around in that direction. So what you should do is take the fingers of your right hand and curl your fingers in the direction that the current is flowing. Simulate the flow of current by curling the fingers of your right hand and then check what direction your thumb points. Isn't your thumb pointing up as your fingers curl around? Sorry for my artistry here. So your thumb is pointing in the direction of this vector we're calling the magnetic dipole moment. So that's exactly it. We've got a loop of wire whose dipole moment points toward the top of the page. And remember it was sitting in a magnetic field that pointed to the right. So try that. Take the dot product of mu cross B, and I think you'll find that produces a rotation in the clockwise direction. Now if I were to ask you, what's the direction of the magnetic dipole moment for this loop of wire? Uh, you really can't answer that until I tell you what direction current is flowing. I think we know that the vector dipole moment is either going to point up or it's going to point down because it always points normal to the plane of the loop. If that's the positive terminal and that's the negative terminal, then current is going to flow this way. If an eyeball could look down onto the plane of this loop and see the current flowing in a clockwise direction, um, you can figure out the direction of the magnetic dipole moment by taking the fingers of your right hand and curling them in this clockwise direction as seen by this eye. 
And I think you'd agree, when you do that, your thumb points downward. So the magnetic dipole moment in this case points down. If the current flows counterclockwise as viewed from above, the magnetic dipole moment points up. And if the current flows clockwise when viewed from above, the magnetic dipole moment points down.